Hello and welcome to Chichester Harbour. This year is a special one. It's the 50th anniversary of the Chichester Harbour Conservancy, which was brought into being by Act of Parliament passed in 1971. So what's been happening over the past 50 years? Over the next few months, we'll be exploring some of the events and projects that have taken place in a short series of videos beginning here. So why was the Conservancy set up? Before 1971, Chichester Harbour was managed by two different authorities, Chichester Corporation and Havant and Waterloo Urban District Council, even though the harbour was one geographical area with one entrance from the open sea. Back in the 1960s, several influential local people started raising awareness of the importance of looking after Chichester Harbour as a whole area. Development was starting to take place and they were concerned that areas around the harbour would be built on. Added to that, there were growing numbers of people starting to use the area for sailing and recreation. The body representing local sailing clubs Chichester Harbour Federation also played a huge role in raising awareness of the importance of managing the area properly. In 1964, Chichester Harbour was designated an Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty, or AONB, and that was vitally important in developing the idea that just one single authority was needed to help look after this very special place. So, the Act of Parliament was passed in 1971 on the 5th of August, although it took, as these things do, several years to really work into being. But this meant that the Conservancy became the single authority responsible for looking after leisure and recreation, nature conservation and the harbour's natural beauty. This was indeed a milestone. The words natural beauty are subjective and this was the first time they had been brought into law. So, how did this change how the harbour was looked after? Well, at the top was now the Conservancy, which is run as a committee of county councillors from Hampshire and West Sussex, local councillors from Havant and Chichester, and representatives from the advisory committee. This second advisory group includes representatives from Chichester Harbour Federation, residents, farming, fishing, marine businesses, those concerned with the natural environment. They meet to discuss any recommendations ahead of the main committee meeting, ensuring that a process is in place to help protect the careful balance needed in the harbour and giving all user groups a voice in managing the harbour. This helps ensure the Conservancy can make the best decisions for the best way forward. So it's now 2021 and the 50th anniversary of the Conservancy's role in managing Chichester Harbour's land and water. In that time, a range of projects have taken place and we worked closely as both the Harbour Authority looking after the water and to manage the AONB on behalf of the local councils to protect this area's natural beauty. In fact, we are still unique in the UK, being the only organisation that both manages an AONB and is also a harbour authority. To celebrate these 50 years, we'll be taking the time to look back at what's happened in the history of the Conservancy and the work which has been done to balance the needs of the harbour with those of wildlife and nature. Next month, we'll be looking back at some of those first environmental projects and their impact today. <laughs>